So I came across another ridiculous article from Sean King today, and uh, it was titled, <laughs> you're not going to believe this, Stop Asking What Happened Before Someone Started Filming Police Brutality. Now, he goes in, you know, first few paragraphs, you know, complaining, you know, oh, do you expect black people to be wearing cameras 24-7? We don't, you know, we don't can think that we're going to get attacked and brutalized by the police you know, on a regular basis, so it's not really up to us to like film whatever. But, you know, he goes in and then, uh, you know, past that. And he's like, he's like, so when a horrible viral video of racism or police brutality makes rounds online, it's rare that a video starts before the encounter begins. By the time a bystander or victim has the thought, I should pull out my camera and begin filming this, the ugly ugliness is normally well underway. Now, that could definitely be true in a lot of circumstances. And I'm no friend of the police either, if you watch my content. So I do know that they do abuse their power. And a lot of the stuff that Black Lives Matter and stuff is talking about, police brutality, they do have some points, right? It's not all bullshit. Like, there are definitely cops that abuse their power, that go in there all power-hungry. And sometimes you don't see what happened. Like, there was that thing a while ago where you just see a cop come and kick some guy in the face while he's like laying on the ground. Now that clearly whatever he did before the camera started rolling, it, it was irrelevant, right? Like he, he didn't need, you don't need to kick a person when they're on the ground, like right in their face. And I've seen plenty of cases like that as well with white people, not just black people. Like if any of you guys remember, there was like that old man a few years ago who was like tasered by this woman on the ground he didn't do anything and then she shot and killed him and there was another boy uh, a, a year ago that I remember that got out of his truck and then the police shot him like it happens a lot with white people too but it's just not shown by the media it's not put on the hill CNN MSNBC we don't we don't get to see it as often but you know he continues and he's like and it's that fact that is now producing a tired trope I hear every single day from people who witness the awful videos and then ask the question, but what happened before this was being filmed? Now, th but that is a legitimate question, you know, to know what happened before was being filmed because a lot of people do resist arrest. And even if you're being apprehended for something which is not justified and, you know, the cops is harassing you and being a dick, it's not good to resist a as well. Like if you're dealing with some asshole with a gun and who is who is trying to abuse his power and be all power hungry and, and on you and shit, it's not good to give him a reason to shoot you because now you're just going to be used by a lot of these race baiters like Sean King to drive more hatred up for white people because they they say oh it's the police but they only ever talk about it when it's <clears throat> a white police officer killing somebody you know this is white they're, they're they're going for white people as a whole like this is what they're building all this angst against it's not just the police it's you know white privilege white this it's these white cops can get away with it this this and that it's like i saw a story the other day and it's like whenever you whenever the media covers this it's always like white cop punches black teenager white cop does this or white person white lady calls in uh like uh calls the police on these people in a barbecue because that happened the other day too right there was this white lady and then she started crying and saying like oh, oh, oh and all this stuff and people are, are using this and then sarah silverman's like oh fuck white people you know oh, fucking white people she said on her tweet it got like thousands of likes and re -like and retweets and it's like being racist because something else that uh racist happened is is not something good like that's not a good response but this whole idea that you should not ask questions when there are gaps in the videos and now it's saying oh it's actually just racist because he goes on 
He's like, the question itself is rooted in racism. When we witness African Americans being brutalized in the most horrific ways imaginable, when we see discrimination of the worst degree, humiliation, degrading African Americans who just want to live their lives in peace, what happened before someone was forced to consider the need to begin filming an incident really does not matter. It's like, yes, you know, we can't expect people to always have fucking uh, a camera ready and stuff, but... It is still a legitimate question. <laughs> Sometimes the person before the camera is being is on is literally attacking the cop, is flailing their arms around, is is doing something illegal. So to not ask is 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 retarded, and it's just making the most benign questions seem racist. Because this is what people like Sean King and stuff that they want to do. Like there was that thing the other day on Twitter. All these people were like. Don't call the police on black people. It's like, what? It's like, okay, uh, this this has to do with, you know, the Starbucks thing that happened. And like I said, that thing with the barbecue. And there was like another, uh, this black girl who was sleeping at a university. And these white, this white girl or whatever called because they're like, oh, they shouldn't be there. We should kick them out and what, whatever. And it's like, okay, in these situations maybe they didn't need to call the cops but now they're applying it to to like all situations it's like okay there are many legitimate times you need to call the cops on a black person or a white person or an asian person doesn't doesn't matter they're you know they they shouldn't get a free pass right and it's like people are crying and bitching and moaning about racism in america but this is literally the extent of it uh, a couple white people at Starbucks calling the cops on some loiterers, right? And then and it gets made into a big fucking issue, this, this, and that. But imagine if there was like that thing a year ago where there's that white uh, retarded kid that got harassed by those four black people and shit. Imagine if, there, if the roles were reversed how we would still be talking about it people are still talking about charlottesville and that killed a white girl and stuff but they're still bringing it up as things about racism and you know it's it's ridiculous nonsense they they blast the most benign aspects of racism and they they make it out like a big fucking deal but it's like if this is the extent of it that's going on in america then then you guys are okay (laughs) <laughs> then you guys don't have that big of an issue if it's just the occasional white person calling the cops on you or something like that that may not be justified or you know it's like uh, you know, it's just it's just stupid but this whole article itself you know st- stop asking what happened before someone started filming police brutality it's like trying to make it seem like a racist question it's like the question is most often asked because the person asking wants to believe that the brutality of discrimination was n- necessary and justified. So the discrimination, so he's adding discrimination there. There may not be discrimination involved, but he's just assuming there is. And yes, I agree. A lot of the times the police, sometimes the brutality is not justified, but sometimes it is. If you look into the cases, you'll see that... <laughs> Uh, you know, even hardcore liberals that are like lawyers and stuff, once they go in and they look into these cases, they're like, okay, all right, well, yeah, the, the cop was kind of justified in that situation. So, you know, it, it, he is hoping that uh, most of his audience, which they probably are, are ignorant about, you know, what, what typically happens within these altercations, you know, it, it's always presented like, oh, you know, he was just not doing anything and this, this and that. But it's like, you know, if you're struggling, uh, you know, with a police officer, you are going to increase your chances of being shot. And it's like, you know, he brings up some examples of, you know, other times it happened and, and this and that. But it was all, like I said, like stupid examples of like just benign racism that is not really a fucking issue and then uh he ends with here's what i know all over this country when white men young and old commit mass shooting slaughtering dozens and dozens of people those men are routinely brought in and arrested without incident police are able to conduct arrests of the most violent awful white men without choking or humiliating them 
but somehow appear to struggle to provide this same level of human de decency to black men, women, and children who are unarmed and nonviolent. And that's the whole other thing. You know, unarmed. Police shot an unarmed man. Unarmed this. But it's like, just because somebody's unarmed does not mean they're not dangerous. You could be coming at somebody trying to reach for their gun, trying to, uh, you know, punch and kick them. I don't know. You could still be dangerous even though you are unarmed. And like I said before, the cops do do this a lot to white people too, but we're just not seeing a lot of it. We're not getting exposed to it as much as we are being exposed to it when it happens to black people. And yeah, there's probably some racism involved probably in some police forces and stuff. And people do act more aggressively a little bit when uh, dealing with black people and stuff, or they're more afraid that they may do something. But that has more to do with a certain aspect of their population that does do that does resist arrest more than other people. So then it's going to lead police in under the impression that, hey, I'm going to have more of a struggle when I'm dealing with these people. So they're going to be more on edge, right? You don't see them doing that with Asian people because they don't worry about Asian people. They don't do anything. They don't struggle when you, when they start to be arrested and stuff. But you know, th this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, continue to ask questions when uh, you don't see people or you don't see, uh, you know, the whole video or whatever. Like, it doesn't make you racist. It just means you're you're skeptic or inquisitive and you, you want to know all the facts before you make a si uh, decision, which any logical, sane-minded person would want to do. But... People like Sean King, they don't want you to think. They just want you to go along with whatever he's saying, whatever narrative he's spewing. You know, don't call the cops on black people. Don't don't ask questions. <laughs> just 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 sit back, white people, and shut up and let us do our thing. Blah blah blah. But you know, whatever. He he's a retard. He's not even fucking black. You know, they're, they're, he's most likely a white person. He's probably like that one lady who <laughs> pretended maybe he has like, I don't know, a black ancestor, like three or four generations past. But, you know, even that I, I pretty much doubt. Well, that's all I pretty much had to say. Uh, sorry about the lighting issue. It keeps messing up every time I move a little bit. I got to fix that. But uh, if you like my content, subscribe and have a good day. And yeah, I'll fix that lighting issue next episode. Thanks.